Okay, everybody, Mr. Shua back at you. We're starting with question 21. We're picking up from there. Which is a solution for the fourth root of W minus 4 plus 11 equals 14? Well, we can do this by hand rather simply. Fourth root of W minus 4 plus 11 is 14. We subtract 11 on both sides. We'll get the fourth root of W minus 4 equals 3. Since this is a fourth root, we want to get rid of the radical. I will raise both sides to the fourth power. Now, the fourth root of anything to the fourth is simply what's under the radical sign, so that's just w minus 4. Then, 3 to the fourth power, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. w minus 4 is 81. Add 4 to both sides, w is 85. Let's plug it in and see if that works. So 85 minus 4 is 81. The fourth root of 81 is 3. 3 plus 11 is 14. Choice D, obvious answer. Boom, let's go on. Now, question 22. Click on the grid to plot each point that is a solution. You must plot all correct solutions. Now, all correct solutions are going to be the points where those two parabolas intersect and it looks like they intersect right there and that's what two comma five right x is two y is five and they intersect here x is negative two y is negative three and those are the only places that they intersect so those are the correct answers all right oh these are easy let's go into 23 which is a solution to 4n minus 37 over 3 equals 10 over n if n is not equal to 0. Again, that just means, you know, there's no negative integers. There's, so, uh, you know, no, no zero. It's just regular numbers that you're dealing with. That's all that means. All right. So, anyway, one of the easiest ways to take care of problems like this, whenever you have a fraction equaling a fraction, easiest way to just cross multiply easiest way so this would be n times 4 n minus 37 and that would be 30. distribute the n 4 n squared minus 37 n equals 30. then i would subtract 30 and 0. at this point you could either use quadratic formula to find your answers or if you're familiar with factoring then you could factor in this case i'm factoring here now, again, like I said previously, the first two numbers here are going to be factors of that 4n squared. So if I take factors of 4, it's either going to be 4n and n or 2n and 2n. In this case, I picked 4n and n to get my 4n squared. And then for the negative 30 here is going to be factors of negative 30. So I have negative 30 and 1, negative 15, 2, negative 5 and 6 negative 10 and 3. I selected negative 10 and 3. Then to double check if it's accurate, I FOIL it just to see. 4n times n is 4n squared. 4n times negative 10 is negative 40n. Positive 3 times n is a positive 3n. Negative 40n plus 3n is negative 37n. Positive 3 times negative n is negative 30. So, these two work. N minus 10 is 0, so 10 is the answer here. That's easy. 4n plus 3 equals 0. When you work it out, n is negative 3 fourths. So negative 3 fourths and 10 would be our answers. And not a, because a says negative 10. We have a positive 10. Negative 3 fourths. D is the only one that works. Okay? Let's move on to question 24. Which is a solution of the absolute value of 2x plus 2x minus 7 plus 1 equals 9? Again, simple absolute value. Subtract 1 on both sides. 2x minus 7 equals 8. We split it into two separate equations. 2x minus 7 equals 8 or 2x minus 7 equals negative 8. In both cases, we're adding 7 to both sides. Here... 2x equals 15 divided by 2x is 15 halves. Here, adding 7 to both sides, 2x equals negative 1 divided x equals 1 half. 
So our answers are 15 halves and negative 1 half. And the only one that fits that criteria is option C, negative 1 half. All right. Are these questions getting easier as we go on? I don't know. All right. Let's look at question 25. X not equal to 0. What's the solution to the following equation? All right. So, 1 minus x over x plus 2 equals 7 over x. Okay, so a simple way. Now, there are a couple more ways that you can answer this. A simple way that I answered, this is a denominator of x. This is a denominator of x. This doesn't have a denominator of x. I want to make it that because anytime we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need to have the same denominator. So I'm going to multiply the 2 by x over x. When I do that, and basically 1 minus x is just negative x, but I just switched it around. Over x, it's the same thing. Plus 2x over x equals 7 over x. Now that all the denominators match, I can drop the denominators and just deal with my numerators. So now I have negative x plus 1 plus 2x equals 7. Then, if I combine like terms, that's simply x plus 1 equals 7, right? Because the negative x plus 2x is just x. Now, if I subtract 1 on both sides, x equals 6. And that is the answer. Okay? X equals 6. And we just plug it right in there. Let us continue. A solution to the quadratic equation is 13 minus 11i radical 7. Which of the following must also be a solution to this equation? Now, remember, when you're using quadratic equation, you get plus or minus. So you're going to have two answers. So... If this is 13 minus 11i radical 7, the obvious choice is going to be 13 plus 11i radical 7 to account for the two answers, plus and minus, all right, D. Question 27, which of the following functions does not have a range of only real numbers greater than or equal to zero? Now, it seems a little intimidating uh, for what? Which of the following functions does not have a range of only real numbers greater than or equal to zero? So basically, they're asking which one has a range where you have negative numbers too, all right? Easiest way to find that out, why don't you just graph them and see what the range is, all right? Let me clear this out from previous. Let me clear this out from previous. Okay, f of x equals square root of 4 minus x. Okay, graph that bad boy, and let's see what we get. Not a, oh, let me zoom in here. I have to, yeah, let me just return everything to normal. range, y values, right? Because it does not have a range. Remember, domain is x values, range, y values. Y values here are zero to positive infinity. So there are no negative numbers in there. So a is out, right? All right, let's go to the next one. It says f of x equals the absolute value, absolute value of x minus Four. All right, we graph that. And I get our range, zero to positive infinity, no negative numbers. So B is out, right? Let's look at C. F of X equals X to the fourth. And the range, 0 to infinity. So none of these have negative numbers. So D, by process of elimination, 
But just to double check it, let's just put it in. Now, log your log buttons right here, f of x, log of x. And so let's graph that. Well, look, we do have negative numbers there. Let me just zoom in on that. Zoom right in on it. We get negative numbers with the f of x equals log of x. So your answer is D, log of x, because it does not have a range of only real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So let us move on to question 28. Oh, we're rolling through these here. Now, this question throws a lot of students off. Directions, type your answer in the box. What is the sum of this infinite series? Okay, a sum of infinite series. If you go to your formula sheet, infinite series, sum of infinite series equals a1 over 1 minus r as long as the absolute value of r is greater than 1. Now this is from unit 9 of your reading. So you need to use the sum of infinite series formula. All right, now, sum of infinite series a1 over 1 minus r if the absolute value of r is greater than one the series has no sum let me go back here and double check this oh yeah our absolute value of r is less than one okay i made a mistake previously i said greater r the absolute value of r is less than one okay so what do we do here so the sum is a sub one a sub one is the first number of 100 then divided by 1 minus r. How do we find the r? That's the thing. In order to find the r, you take the second number divided by the first number, or the third number divided by the second number, or the fourth number divided by the third number. So if we take here the second number divided by the first number, we get 0. 0.6. If we take the third divided by is 0. 0.6. So our r is 0. 0.6. We get that. So now that we have our r, which is 0. 0.6, and it is less than 1, so there is a sum. If it was greater than 1, the series would have no sum, okay? So now we apply this formula. S equals a sub 1. a sub 1, our first number is 100, divided by 1 minus r. r is 0. 0.6. So that works out to be 100 divided by 0. 0.4. If you do 100 divided by 0.4 in your calculator, you get 250. Okay, again, this is unit 9, and you need to know which formula to use in order to answer this question. Okay, question 28, let's go on to question 29. The graph of the parent function is shown. Which function belongs to the same family? Easiest thing to do? Graph them and see. Now I graph this one here and looks something like that. I graphed this one and looks like that. I graph that one looks like this. Choice D is the only one that looks like this. You can graph them on your, I'm not going to graph them now just to save time, but when you graph them on your calculator, choice D is the only one that looks like this. Choice D is your answer. All right, so let's go on to question 30. Which number is a zero of f of x equals log 4x minus 1? Well, let's just graph that puppy. Log 4x minus 1. Okay, and we see a zero. So let's find out what that zero is. Second trace zero. Okay. And hmm. 
matter of fact, let me make it normal here. Let me make let me make it normal and then trace it. Okay, second trace zero. Okay. And looking for my left around here. Where's that dog on thing at? Oh, here we go. So left bound from up right bound guess and it says x is 0.5 which is one half that's all you do graph it find the zero boom okay so that's number 30. all right so now the next video is going to be questions 31 through 40. we got through that one pretty quickly let's see if we can get through the next one as quickly as well okay see you on the next video